there is a funny, mischievous thing happening with what remains of Stugatz's interest in sports at this late, tired place in his career. <laughs> and what I will tell you... Got a bit of Panthers news here, Dan. Uh, the Panthers have locked up their number one defenseman, Gustav Forsling. Eight years at $5.75 million a year. Look oh, at that big. smile. Look that's, at that smile. Big. They just locked up somebody who's actually worth $7 million at that price. That's, that's bigger than the trade for me. Like yeah, that guy, that's, that's, that's our huge. best defenseman. Like that is huge for the Panthers. That is huge. Big time. Big time deal. Hmm. Um, uh, okay, and that uh, concludes our hockey coverage. <laughs> Worth interrupting? This, uh, subject. Well, well, you I, never know. Something else might happen. You no, know? no. Here's it's what I would tease. say. No, here's what I would say to you. Something else might happen. <laughs> you never know. Something else might happen. <laughs> oh, oh, Jonah Gadjevich got signed That's as well. a rallying cry, huh? <laughs> Put that on your T-shirts for Florida Panthers confidence. You never know. Something else might happen. <laughs> yeah, something else might happen. All right. Look. They have cap space. You said it earlier. Yes, they got right? cap space. Right. Cat we'll space. <laughs> Let's examine what just happened here a second ago, shall we? You Let's... can't give yourself that one for that. It wasn't wow. that good. No, 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 no. Chris Cody, go sit in the penalty box. buttons are fun. Oh, wow. Go sit in the penalty box. Get out of here. Uh, this is what I will tell the audience, and it's bad judgment on a couple of fronts. One of them is that we have drifted way too far away from what is the rarest of things, genuine Stugat emotion. He was moved. I saw it. It's rare. He was moved when we were talking about Chris Whittingham. Right. And all that Chris Cody has done since then is jealously get in the way of our ability to get to that story. <laughs> Because what he just did there, and I'm not saying, Roy, I am excited for you. I am excited for Panthers fans. The idea that this franchise would signal to everybody, yes, we know we are in line for the championship. And also as well, we're going to start spending and our players want to remain here, even though it looked like we didn't have the money to afford these people. It appears the Florida Panthers are trying to build exactly the same thing that Tampa did by swelling off of some momentum with an excellent hockey team that also around the league is hating. So them making big moves about today and their future is about as exciting as you can get about the economy of local sports. Goddamn right it is. <laughs> I am excited, Dan. That's a better name for your show on Fridays, and it's what it should goddamn be right during it the playoffs. More than Puck Boys and more than an occasional Friday show. You're goddamn right it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll take it under advisement. But I think the issue is, yesterday you wanted to break into programming to talk about a big Panthers trade. Chris waved you off, and then he just disrupted you with a kachung because he wanted to I changed my mind. <laughs> what? I changed my mind about how I wanted to do this. I don't want to annoy the I do not want to annoy the national audience but with, with the hockey playoffs and Panthers talk any more than we're already going to annoy them in six weeks when the playoffs start <laughs> all right you got a good point but th that is technically national news the the league's talking about this so it's a, it's a big signing at great value okay so celebrate that and Chris Cody will be back in a moment but genuinely and I don't know Jessica and Lucy Juju did you feel any of this it is very rare for me to feel genuine pride off of Stugatz and what he felt in Whittingham making the call at the top of sports. Like, it's uh, – it, we just can't we, – we knew it was going to happen, and we're also – we can't believe it's already happened. This is a kid who, when Dan and I were doing afternoons on 790 The Ticket, we had to split up a little bit to do two-a-days. Me and Mark Hockman, our executive producer at the time, we did the mornings, and then we came back and we did afternoons with Dan. And it was grueling. It was during a heat playoff run. But Chris Whittingham was 17 years old at that time, and he was our executive producer in the morning. And the first time I met Whittingham, he told me that he wanted to do exactly what it is that he is currently doing. And so to see how, how happy he is, even while dancing around at a Ranger game, but to see him realize his dreams, his dreams come true uh, for someone that I've known, and he's done a lot for me, uh, but someone I've known for a long time and someone I love, yeah, I got, I got moved there, Dan. I you. Traitor. I love that kid. Yeah. Golf. Yeah. <laughs>
My apologies. He's also there for me. Chris Whittingham is also, he's just a, such a nice guy, bro. Like, so nice. Off, away from his, his credible, credible career, I was going through a rough patch. I, I had lost a, a family member, you know what I mean, a couple months ago, and I had mentioned it, and he double-checked around and, and called me. We had a great conversation one Saturday, and he just said nothing but positive things that allowed me to pick myself up, you feel me? So salute to Chris Whittingham and his lovely mom and his lovely brother. Oh, lovely oh my dad. God, we love lovely you, bro. Lovely dad, too. I, I Never think. Yeah, his pops, yeah. Didn't I, leave I, him out. Good guy. I don't think, in fact, I, don't, I won't say I think this. Um, I'm assuming that Chris Whittingham was deeply moved that he gets to do that because, gets to do all of that, both the call and reaching out to you, because he was profoundly impacted by Grant Wall's death because on top of all the other lovely things having happening around Whittingham, he cares deeply about that sport and that sport's success in this country that was led by a journalist he admired a bunch, Grant Wall, who one day to the next, you lose the ability to tell the people that you admire them that they had a positive impact on you. So all of that stuff is super uh, cool to hear, uh, but also f*** off. <laughs> yeah. Like, God for real, uh, for real Whittingham. Am I hitting this like, now? For real. <laughs> It didn't feel good. I mean, because it's uh, it felt I, good to me. What he's done is, I mean, it, the Panthers are the best they've ever been, and now he's a Rangers fan. Come on. Yeah. Kachuk, yeah. yeah, Woody, pick a team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, I said something on the show that kind of reminded me of Woody because someone tweeted at me to mansplain uh, contraception. And it uh, uh, segue. Uh, it was about Love Is Blind, uh, transition. which the fi finale came out last night. Dan's been trying to force us, foist basically all of us onto Mina Kimes and her podcast reviewing Love Is Blind, and we basically all ignored him. But I did want to briefly mention it because I decided this year that I was going to watch just the first episode and the last episode and just try to guess what happened in the middle. But man. I couldn't get through the last episode because it is such a bad show. It was terrible. So boring. Oh, my God. I fell asleep and I woke up and I was like, whoa, this is the finale. What's wrong with me? Boring. It was so boring, brother. It is so predictable. Lucy, spoiler. have you seen the last one yet? I did see the last one. Um, spoiler. In case no no wait no no wait hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on I was giving the alert ahead of time. All right, hold on. But we have Lucy. You will help us with this. We're protecting you here. No, not even. No, we have been bad at spoilers the entire time that we've been doing this, and I'm the worst culprit. So we will warn people on whatever this is. But I don't want to just what I just did. I don't want to gloss over what Jessica did. We'll get there in a second because. Mina Kimes loves Love is Blind. Mina Kimes has been growing a YouTube page uh, that uh, reviews Love is Blind. Our show, I've rarely seen everyone as interested about something so stupid as what this show is interested about Love is Blind. And I wanted to connect the two worlds. And as soon as I did, everyone said I was lame and didn't want to do a party together. I actually first, I'm going to make you guys feel safe here. I can play a sounder that will make us clear of all spoiler alerts. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Blah, 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 blah. You're good. So that's our new spoiler alert it's sounder. Spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Nailed it. Excellent. Uh, go ahead, Lucy. Wait a Can minute. Can you let, play the sound let, again? Let, yes, play. Let's intro it with all of the production value that Chris Cody brings to the show. Spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> man, that brought back memories, man. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It is hard to say it sometimes. The, it's oh, a tongue twister. The, yeah. the alert. A couple yeah. of L's. Cut it up. I'm staying Spoiler away right alert. now. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Iowa. It is, <laughs> thanks Miami, um, it is a bad show, objectively not a good show, which is why I like it. The finale is really, like, it's dry. You got to fast forward through it. Spoiler but alert. Sorry. Here's the spoiler alert. alert. Um, one of the women gets left at the altar, and as he's leaving her at the altar, and he's like, hey, I'm not going to marry you, He after he said that. He goes, but I'm still rocking with you, which I think is the absolute rock bottom you could possibly be. He's like, I don't want to marry you. And then he literally said, I'm still rocking with you, though. What? And she's standing there trying not to cry in front of all her friends and family. She's not rocking with him. She is not rocking with him. And it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my what? life. I would love for NFL free agency to be this way, where you're interviewing quarterbacks, but you don't know who your quarterback is. Love is blind. Starts. Football yeah. edition would be sick. <laughs> ah, that's so good.
<laughs> it, Opening day, it's revealed the Tampa Bay Bucks quarterback. But then you have to set it up so that you're at the place where you're signing the contract, and that's when you decide on camera if contracts are blind. And you accept this team. Uh, Russell Wilson and the Steelers can do this like next week if they want. Are you guys telling me that the most unctuous of characters is it Jerry or whichever guy you hated the most here because he was a green, a, win, a winking, uh, grinning, jet ski wielding schmo? He that sucks. Is, <laughs> no, the but worst. This, don't get me started on his punk ass. He's a true Emily. Bro, how you going to divorce your fiance and then hop on the jet skis in her face, in her sight line with this other woman? Salute to you, brother, but you are a piece of scum. Spoiler alert. <laughs> There's a moment where she's like crying to the camera and you can see him on the jet skis with the new girl in the background. Terrible. Okay, but at the very least, you're telling me with this spoiler alert that he's not the one guilty of standing someone up at the altar and then saying to them, I'm not going to marry you, but I still rock with you is the most tepid of commitments. <laughs> no, they broke up after the whole jet ski incident. So once you're done, once you go through your jet ski incident of a sort, then you're pretty much done on the show until the reunion, which will be next week. And that is going to be but spicy. What's the, I still rock with you. <laughs> that's the that's most tepid of commitments. That's, look, spoiler alert. Listen to me spoiler again. Alert, alert, spoiler sorry. alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. That's Clay and AD. You feel me? Clay has not been okay. I got to choose my words wisely. Clay oh. isn't one of the smartest guys in the world. Yes. He is not top five smartest guys in the world. So whenever he be explaining certain stuff, especially when he say, "But I'm still rocking with you," holy moly, brother, just walk <laughs> off, take unmike, go. What it, What is the distinction you're making? Because that's very gentle of you, Juju. You're not somebody who's very often a public critic. You try not to be a public cr critic, uh, but you pretty clearly called someone dumb there. But I didn't clearly call nobody dumb. I'd say he's not top five smartest in the world. Neither am he I. Could be sixth. Neither is nobody in this. I would take uh, six. Outside uh, looking in. Top ten? I mean. Not top ten either. He's 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 just a hilarious character who who gets caught out there with his words. And he I just think talks. you're doing that perfectly gently. I'm I'm sort of amazed at the dexterity of what you just did. I don't know this character, and yet I think he's a fool. And you did you did not say that. I do social media. I have to put things certain ways, you know. But yeah, he he didn't do that delicately at all in front of her mom, in front of her family, in front of every in on front the of the altar. Lord. Oh my God! It was Why won't you guys just do this show with Mina Kimes? Why did you just do it here? You know what? We are gonna do it here. Salute the love is Kimes, and but sis, sis sis didn't sound like she wanted us involved anyway on that text message <laughs> chat. So I I read the room. I'm like, well, she we'll do it on our own, sister Mina. Good uh, salute to Lenny, but we. We're going to handle our own recap show with the reunion next year, next week. We can maybe do it for a Sunday Night Live with me, Tony, and oh, the whole crew. but there's Get an in. Oscars watch party. Oh, That's yeah. on the reunion next week ah, after the, okay. the finale just happened this Mark week. Mark it in your calendars. You dig me. You could say she wasn't rocking with us. She was not rocking with us, not Mina. But, yeah, the, and also the other one, the Christian McCaffrey and uh, – <laughs> <was, laughs> Oh, and my Megan God. Fox, yeah. He couldn't wait to break up with her ass, boy. Oh, my goodness. And you but. might be thinking, wow, how did Jess and Juju say this was a boring show and all these things happened? That's how bad the show is. There was things that happened and it was still boring. Yep. You guys Just got obsessed so with a show mush. and it fell apart. It fell apart four minutes into your enthusiasm. Just like the Super Bowl plans we had for the Dolphins. <laughs> so imagine. New football season, opening day, you go there, you're excited, you got the jersey on, and you find out right then and there, Jameis Winston is your quarterback. <laughs> oh, goosies. Could also be a bad, like, there could be some bad examples of that, like if Jameis Winston was your quarterback. <laughs> that is the bad example. <laughs> and they're both they're both good and bad. That's the rare one that's both good and bad. Wow, that's exciting. Oh, no, we're going to be 7-10 uh, and 10 with 30 interceptions. Fun press conferences. But though. 30 touchdowns. Uh, yes, and yes. also 30 touchdowns. Right. That's correct. Uh, and it's good and bad. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be interesting, except all those games you lose 30-7. to seven. You're a Dolphin fan. You show up opening day. Russell Wilson is your quarterback. I'm upset. <laughs> you saved $53 million. Oh. Ooh, I'm back. <laughs> Jessica, I am with you. On uh, You are right. It is uh, Stugatz is just obsessed with the name quarterback, <laughs> and he wants Russell Wilson cheap because Russell Wilson was good a few years ago. There's just been so much weird Stugatz stuff this week, and that's definitely <laughs> one of them. Really? Oh, yeah. It's a value play. I don't think, like, 
What's the drop off from Tua to Russell Wilson? I'm being serious here. Talk about it. Probably a bunch of accuracy. I don't know, Chris. Like, I think Tua had two more touchdown passes than Russell Wilson did last year. And I think Russ had six less interceptions. And he had the defense of the uh, Denver Broncos was the only, uh, what, star on top of their tree in the Broncos facility. And that offensive line was trash. And he still, bro, they was in the uh, the late season graphics, still in wild card contention late with that uh, offense. So, I mean, dare I say. Thank you. Speaking of the Dolphins, I don't know if you guys saw the story about all the fans who went to the Dolphins Chiefs game. Uh, that was in it was the third coldest game in NFL history. You know, we talked about how dangerous it was, blah blah blah. But there was a story this week. Dangerous it was, blah 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 blah. 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 I mean, we don't have to rehash yada, yada. how cold it was. We right. remember it was not that long ago. Mm-hmm. I saw a story yesterday that said that there were a number of fans who have been treated for frostbite since attending the game that now are potentially seeking out amputations because oh, they yeah. had exposed fingers or body parts that now are completely frostbitten. And there was also a video that accompanied it, which I said to the video team, and I don't know if we want to run it or not. I don't know if they have it ready, but it was really friggin' nasty. And there were black fingertips and gross little like frostbitten fingies. Oh, I don't think we want terrible. to do that. I don't blah, think blah, blah, blah. I, we will take, uh, we will uh, make an executive decision to not uh, horrify the audience. But we had it. <laughs> I got frostbite. Ironically, this is a real sentence. I got frostbite at Gronk Beach in Las Vegas, Nevada. For Super Bowl weekend, <laughs> this happened. So what? you know the uh, on the stage where they have the smoke machines, <laughs> the liquid nitrogen. Yes. A fan God. of the show was in the audience and was like, "Yo, Jew, can you get Grant to sign my hat?" And I was like, "Of course. What? What? what I, why, why would I not?" I reached out to get it at the same exact time. <laughs> Ooh. And my entire sleeve was like all white and frozen, my, my my hoodie. So I was scared and it hurt, but I was in front of everybody. So I'm like, yeah, right. This is nothing. Look at my wrist. I'm so icy. So icy entertainment. <laughs> you did. But when I got home, I had to peel my hoodie off of my skin. So no. it's still it's still pretty bad. You Whoa. did me. It's like all around, like in, in there. I see it. It's so bad. But I got I got frostbite at Grant Beach. Salute. Uh Juju, here I I do do not wish to uh, question any of your credentials here. However, I'm pretty sure that what I just saw sweep uh, across the face of an incredu- incredulous Chris Cody was some version of, I believe Juju just diagnosed himself with frostbite that wasn't actual frostbite. Of course. We do that in the streets all the time. I don't know the pneumonia, the flu, whatever it is, I'm frostbitten. I don't know the logistics. Okay, but we were talking about crispy. We were talking about crispy amputations. This is a horror, I thought. Do I have this wrong in my Crispy. memory? <laughs> We're talking about Kansas City and the actual cold weather. You're talking about Gronk Beach. I'm talking about <laughs> having frozen <It's> <laughs> frozen body parts amputated because people in that crowd did not know the dangers of what it is that they were doing. But do I remember it wrong when I think someone was shirtless in that weather? There was yeah. someone, yeah. Yes. This, was. And this report is from Fox 4, so if people want to seek out the video, they can go ahead and do that. But, yeah, it was... Uh, pretty horrifying to read that, and the photos will haunt me for the rest of my life. Uh, from As people from cold weather places, you have what familiarity, Lucy and Jessica, with the horrors of frostbite? Because it sounds less bad than it is. I am from North Carolina, but thank you for including me <laughs> in this. Damn. Um, but Fine. I was prepared for frostbite when I got to Iowa. They tell you that. Um, it's something that you know. They'll when you when it's deep in the negatives. Like when I was there, it got as low as negative. Feels like negative fifty. If you are outside with exposed skin for more than three minutes in that situation, you will get frostbite. It's very well known. It's something they talk about on the news all the time. I was sent out an alert, so I was prepared for it. But hey. Live your life. Football's football. Do what you got to do. <laughs> Safety first, everybody. It's the third coldest uh, football game that's ever been played, and the entire Dolphin season went to collapse there, where fingers were becoming nubs <laughs> because of how cold it was. Salute the true detective and those brothers who got froze on that ice out there, man. Rest in peace. Uh, I want to ask you guys something and play some video for you as well, because, Stugatz, I read the other day, and this was interesting to me, as a piece of nostalgia and something priceless that has a price. I saw that the booth in the diner where James Gandolfini may or may not have died at the end of The Sopranos, which 
many people listening to this would say that's the greatest television show ever made. Top five. Spoiler wi- alert. Sorry. Wildly considered one of the best pieces of art, television, entertainment ever made. Terrible ending. Uh, yes, a lot of people thought that as well, that the ending was uh, terrible. But a famous booth and scene from a very famous show has sold for $82,000. The owner of that New Jersey diner was trying to uh, raise money for some renovations, created an eBay account, and the people wanted it so badly. He just wanted $3,000. It ended up being $82,000 because it's not, you don't get anything but, you know, that piece of diner, but it's a museum piece, and it went for $82,000. The initial offer sounds low, $3,000? Right. That, that, wow. Salute so to the humanitarian and whatever the word is that goes along with this uh, spoiler alert. But dare I say, whoever bought that, you are the joker of the day or the week and the year. You buying that weak ass uh, uh, soprano booth. Nobody's going to know who it is when they come over to your house and sit in the booth. You, sir, are a joker. Sorry for interrupting the show. But how about the guy who owns it saying $3,000 when he could have gotten 82? He did get 82. Like, that's. Well, amazing. he started. Just starting he was yeah. just starting. I know, but start higher. I mean, come okay, on. You know someone's okay, going to pay okay. for that. It's the Sopranos, Dan. Juju's so right, though. If you're going to spend this amount of money on something, I need to be able, be able to have people walk in my house, and they know instantly exactly what right. it is. Right. Oh, With this, like, oh have... that's the car from Back to the Future. That's right. obvious with that. <laughs> right. have... In the living room. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying that would be obvious. Right. You have to say the table and the diner from the Sopranos. There has to be a sign It's a real there. wordy. Right. You have to be like, right. so this is. Let me set this up for you. So remember that one scene at the very, it's like too much. You see this belt? This is John Olrude's Ooh. belt. <laughs> Damn. Oh, his helmet. <laughs> his helmet, yeah. His helmet. I would know that. <laughs> you guys are doing something here that is both accurate and it feels like, I'm not going to say disrespectful, but I was actually trying to think of what is the item from television that I would most want to have in my home because it represents some piece of television that will be so precious to me mm. that I, even if no one else knows that I have the booth from The Sopranos, I know. I have the booth from The Sopranos, and so whether I'm showing it off or not, like it's just a it's a great priceless thing to me uh, because Carmella of how- Sopranos acrylic French manicure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think also you gotta go Batmobile. <laughs> That's a good one. You feel me? Because yeah. everybody know what that is. You put up in that. Who is getting out of here? I think I'm gonna start telling people I have Jerry Seinfeld's fridge. Nice. <laughs> I would want the masks of the ex-presidents from Point Break. Oh, I want yeah. the mask of Jim Carrey from The Mask. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> That's the one. Man, wow. if you have that on your mantle, everyone knows exactly what that right. is right when they look at that. I just have a rubbery face. <laughs> Stu Gonson's again. Never Stu Gonson just got wooden. something you could get wooden at a Halloween it's, store. It's not always. <laughs> I could actually have them. Yes, you could. Yeah. It looks more like wood. Like it's darker, like not a dark green. Anymore. Right, it's enchanted. Yeah. A truly terrible pick. Oh, remember when you looked at it? My it was pick. like, <sighs> man, if there was, if you, man. if you told me, of all the things in movies, if like just for it to be real, I would love to be able to put on that mask and turn into the mask. Right. That would be so mm. sick. Smoking. <sighs> Roy, why are you shaking Somebody your stop head? Me. I'm on the complete opposite side of that because you're not gonna remember what happened. Oh, that's. I mean, but there'll not... be but there'll be videos. People will take videos of me, and you'll that will be, crush you'll, on you'll social. You'll be internet famous. That's which is the only thing that really matters. The I superhero think... for the modern times. I changed my mind. I think I want the little Vespa that Russell Crowe drives in the Pope's oh. Exorcist. <laughs> that's a good one. Really? That's a good one. <laughs> Maybe his frock too. It's a little haunted and evil as well as an added bonus. I want to play some video here, Stu Gatz. This is uh, from the famous uh, home in Breaking Bad. If you, I don't know if people in this area, I'm assuming this is in Albuquerque, but uh, this show, another one of these nostalgic favorites that sticks to people who are like, man, my emotional connection to discovering this and living this made me run, binge through it because I can't believe how good the television was. A woman lives in that home. She is tired of people coming by that home and interrupting her life. And here a comedian does it to this woman who's fed up with people coming around her home. I just wanted to get a picture. I'm a big fan of the show. Good whoopee sh- Oh, whoopee my ass. Man, you ought to learn to chill a little bit, hon. I don't have to, you mother Hey, hey, relax. Get out of here! Get, hey, son of a bitch. Yeah, she's threatening to call the cops on me. I've already got him on the phone, mother Get out! Can you just please let me get a couple pictures? Get away from my house! You're pissing me off. Whoopee, 
I am done with you. Oh, what a f <laughs> little bitch boy. I don't appreciate being called a bitch boy. Yeah, you better go in. Don't tell me what the f you do. Get out. Get in the house. Don't you tell me what to do. Oh, you little, you son of a bitch. Better yet, Forrest, run, Forrest, run. Don't you f threaten me. Get in the house. I regret playing that. <laughs> hey, who is that, bro? Don't, don't you ever talk to my grandma like that, boy. I will come outside to tell my grandma to get in the house. Are you playing? Who is that? I was told that was funny, and I just felt bad for that cigarette-wielding woman who lives in a home she did not know was haunted by a comedian who's not funny and agitating her. Wearing a koozie sweater. If you don't get your ass up out of here. <laughs> Made me want to smoke. <laughs> She's waving a cigarette, and it, it is buoyed only by her rage, which is earned. Get the fuck away from her house. Stugatz is hurting. I don't know if you heard at the beginning of the week, though, but this was supposed to be a vacation week for him, and then he surprised us all, and he gutted it out, and he was an American hero. He toughed it out through four American work days, and here he stands uh, close to the end of the week. Off tomorrow. Uh, yes, off tomorrow, as am I, incidentally. I should tell, oh, nice. uh, I should tell the audience that uh, the shipping container and an assortment of fun people will do whatever it is that they're going to be doing Friday through Sunday because they're going to have That's control. That's a long shift. They're going to have control of the feeds with David Sampson, with Adnan Verk, whatever it is that becomes, and they're going to be in control uh, all of tomorrow and on Friday. But Stugatz is a step slow here late in the week because his stamina is down because God bless football was hard. The football season was hard. And so as soon as we went to break in the last segment, okay, and I'm tired too. Yeah, we he, just saw that because yeah, tomorrow is Friday. Yes, but I'm yeah, tired. But he, but he breathes in my face the hot cigarette take. It's just flaming covered in ash. And he's like, but a second late, the show is now stopped. And he's like, she shouldn't live there. If she doesn't want that outside of her house, she shouldn't live there. But he, he gives me the opinion not on the air when I could have used it. Right. He gives it to me after we've gone off the air when I can use the rest from his breath. Well, it was the end of the segment. And so all I'm saying, if you're going to buy a famous house, a famous house from TV, a famous house from what you know, a movie that you've seen, then you know what? You have to expect that people are going to come by the house. If you own the house from Full House, people are coming by. If you own the Grateful Dead's original house that they lived in, they all lived in in San Francisco, it's a tourist attraction. People are coming by. I've been by there several times. I take pictures. You can't get mad if people want to see the house that you purchased when you purchased a Look at Me house. Assuming that the realtor told her that this was the Breaking Bad house. Assuming. Like, She's, how she, how could she not know? You're leaving money on the table if you're this lady. You should start open tours. Man, if this is my house and I say get off my property, you got T minus 10 seconds before my son come downstairs and get you off my property. People also, I, I read, like, throw pizzas on the roof because that's, like, a scene. In oh, yeah, that is a Breaking Bad. Oh, that's Why annoying. Why would you throw a pizza uh, on Oh, but that's a, pizza. that's a famous scene. Chris. Roy remembers that scene. I'm going to throw Absolutely. a pizza on your roof. No, but how? Now, wait a minute. Two what? days later, now you got rats. <laughs> We're actively making this life's worth. Now, wait a minute. Think about this for a second. Let's think about this. Because Stu Gantz defending our right to throw pizza on this woman's roof if she doesn't know that she's living in the Breaking Bad house. Imagine that you lived where you lived. You did not know that you were living in a famous television house. And strangers you do not know continually come over to your house and throw not a pizza box on your roof, a whole pizza on your roof because it's a famous scene from the movie. You'd get fed up after a few years of that. But how could you not know? What a terrible realtor if they're selling that house not telling you it's the house from Breaking Bad. That's how you get the price. You up. can't. You can't tell them because you is it? Because think about what I just told you, Stugatz. That'd be a miserable yeah. place to live if you had to hire security to get strangers to stop throwing pizza on your roof. I think it gets the price up, and you have to tell the person you're moving into a house that Stugatz, people are going to visit. I understand you're playing the Monday morning quarterback <laughs> on. I know exactly what would come with buying the Breaking Bad house. You don't know the scene we're talking about. I saw the show. I wouldn't think. That people would be frisbeeing pizzas on my house if I lived there. Well, don't for, buy the house. For the years that I lived there. And the realtor, 
would trick me if she told me or he told me that they are selling me the Breaking Bad house and nothing bad will happen, and I know nothing bad will happen because now I've got a rat problem. Breaking Bad, Harambe, man, this show slapped in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame, man. Now she has to get a sign saying no solicitation and no throwing pizzas on the roof. I understand her anger, and I feel aware of dog, too. Not even a shakaroni pizza, because those weren't invented yet. Plus, you can only frisbee a pizza before it's been sliced. Yeah, yeah. That's an important thing to that's remember. Here. Well, but yeah. that's Thanks, what was thrown. But that right. is what's that is what's being thrown. Just try to sl- have you just slice it. It's going everywhere. Yeah. So these diabolical yeah. buttholes are getting ordering unsliced pizzas to go over to this lady house. But come on, man. <laughs> Evil. That's a good insult. No one's called anyone a butt. I haven't in heard a while. that in a long time. It's really good. 2016, man. We're very back. cutting. We back. Election coverage. Chris Cody, can you please tell me uh, where we are because some ideas that we have don't get fully- Miami. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> I gotta leave. The Elser. Five minute major. <laughs> Dan, let the power of the shaft bring you back to us. Let the shaft lead you. He's, With the gold tip. He's tired at the end of the week, and the last swing he takes at me is just one last slice of where we are in Miami. On Sunday, we have an Oscar party show. Do you guys know who's going to be involved with that? Because David Sampson is worried that the that we are not going to contribute to what it is he's trying to do on Sunday. Um, I don't want to overcommit for somebody, but I've seen some RSVPs. You're going to see Ben Lyons, Adnan, and Adnan Verk in that studio owning it. But you're also going to see, I believe everyone in this room is going to be there. I saw Dan might be there. So it's going to be part of the show like we're going to be spackling what they're doing and probably just running amok because they're just going to want to nerd out on oscar stuff and i just want to have fun i want to know what everyone's wearing i can't wait for the red carpet speaking of the uncount the run amok was another good misspelling that we had on one of our lower thirds a few weeks ago they didn't spell it am it was run space a space muck I'm sorry to the video team. I, I do think it's funny, though. <laughs> it is. Our, our video team is highly, and there are some times that they uh, they run into some Spanglish issues. I don't blame them for not understanding that run amok should have been spelled differently. They need to do better on unknown, though. We should put out our own odds, come up with some creative uh, odds for Sunday, like Whoa. how many uh, buttons is Adnan's shirt going to be unbuttoned? How many flip-flops will Adnan wear? Over I, or under? Over. Or I want to pin David and Adnan against each other. Like, I want their... like. They have their predictions, and if Adnan gets one topic, like one category right, and David should do something. Like we gotta get, make him. Let's embarrass. I got twenty-seven him. nothing personals, plus twenty-seven nothing personal. No, minus twenty-seven nothing personals. Yeah. This uh, the reason. Over. I, the reason I bring this up. Uh, look, man, uh, Chris Cody, you've had a unique look uh, as uh, we have taken on other production projects working with Adnan Verk. This is a historic moment. I would say. The entire time I have known you, I have wanted Adnan Verk and David Sampson to work together on something. I have forced it on them, and I have forced it on you, and I have forced it on this show. And now they are, I don't know how often they're in each other's company, but they used to hate each other. And Adnan legitimately used to hate Samson and really disagrees with him. What they're doing Sunday is the first time they've done any of this together, correct? It is the first time that they are doing a produced bit where it's just them live, too. I don't think they've ever, I mean, other than every seven week hours live, seven hours. They're doing a seven hour show live. They've never worked together before. They don't particularly like each other. All of that is real, but they like this thing together and they'll do something around movies. Yeah, I was going to say uh, you said they used to hate each other like that changed or something. I'm, okay, so it hasn't changed. There's the potential no. for this going off the rails. Possibly. Time now for Thursday Thunder. Thursday Thunder is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Let's go over to Juju Gotti because the kid is on fire. Wait a minute. Let me set this up correctly, okay? We have had a couple of amazing streaks in the history of this show. (laughs) Carrot top for seven straight weeks, knocked off Callan Cowherd, and then... 
Chris Jericho for like 11 or 12 straight weeks in our celebrity prognosticator was as hot as anyone's ever been, broke Carrot Top, shattered Carrot Top's record. But I don't believe in the history of this show. I started a season 0-16. Yes, a, a couple of seasons. You've started 0-16. And, and worse. Yeah. And worse. Yep. But Juju, I believe, is the hottest that's ever been in the history of this show. He is 10-0. and 0. He has hit the last three three-team, three-leg parlays and his most recent bet. I faded him last that's night. That's right. Stugatz is an asshole. Like, yes, just sir. straight asshole. It's okay. I forgive you, Stugatz. Thank you. So, Salute to my brothers and sisters. I, I, I just love all the support y'all giving me. Stugatz today. thinks you're due to lose. He has announced it. So <laughs> dare you go. So, uh, d- dare what? you go 3 Your and 0. Your going to lose. 3 and 0 lose. again, Juju. Man, hopefully, man. We, we keep our fingers crossed every week, but we also we thank our good and faithful sponsors, oh. DraftKings. Oh, my God. We love you guys. First leg of the bet, guys. MPJ, Michael Porter Jr. He's having a great month, man. He's been scoring the ball more. He's been swinging the ball, passing it finally a little more. And I'm going to go with his rebounds tonight. It's at 6.5. He should get 6.5 rebounds tonight, in my opinion. You feel me? That's the first thing. Juju, uh, this is funny uh, that I was uh, on a text string in which I pointed out that the I demanded, this never happened, that the show insult Michael Porter <laughs> after he said how many matchup advantages they had against the Miami Heat because Michael Porter was the single worst starter in that final series on either team. Yeah. And since I said that, Michael Porter has shattered every basketball <laughs> record known to man. Yeah, yeah. He also had a blunder when talking about women's sports, but we're not going to go there. Neither here nor there the second leg we're going to go with the joker 24.5 points tonight we're going to go over that so we like the the nuggets winning i'm assuming we like no, the we not, they're You're playing not the celtics that. they're You're playing the celtics that. i want them to lose by 100 score but they're gonna he's gonna get 24.5 points against my seeds tonight i can dig that third leg we're gonna go with the jonathan kaminga from the golden state warriors you feel me he's he, since he cut his hair Oh, my God. He's about to revolutionize the game of basketball. He started playing basketball. I don't even think he played in college. So what you're seeing is raw talent learning at the knee of Steve Kerr, who still God says is not the greatest coach ever, and neither do I. Because I feel like I can coach the, the, uh, the Warriors Thank one you. or two games and get them two Ws. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go Jonathan Kaminga over 16.5 points tonight, John John. You did. Well done. Stu Gantz believes all of it. that Steve Kerr <laughs> is overpaid at two years, $35 million. He's not. He's <laughs> right. He's right, bro. Give me the Warriors, I'll get them 100 wins a year. Jessica, also right. 